I'm, and I'm thankful um, just that we can have relationship with you, that we can come to your throne and, and that we can communicate with you, that we can have intimate relationship with you, and that you answer us when we pray to you and when we cry out to you, I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful just, just to be able to hear your voice and have relationship with you. And Lord, um, may you bring hope tonight. Lord God, may, may you just bring enlightenment and understanding in your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Beautiful. <laughs> well, welcome, ladies, to week two of Becoming a Virtuous Woman. Who remembers what we spoke about last week? What did you take away from last week's lesson? First, the first lesson. Amber, Cheyenne, Lisa. Uh, well, it was about, can we, sorry, can you be trusted? Yes. Learning about true. being a virtuous woman. Mm -hmm. That's really so, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So virtue, I didn't realize the strength, force, and power under submission and self-control. To me, that was like, wow, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Cheyenne. Um, from last week, I got like a, a lot out of, you know, just that first part of like the Proverbs and can he be trusted? I've, I've just like, like thought of all week, you know, like, can I be trusted? That mm -hmm. question. And it's just really helped me a lot. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Lisa? Um, like laying down our lives for others. Mm, that's good. That's being virtuous to me. Yes, that's really good. That's really good. And who else was on your last week? Let me see. Okay. Anyway, this evening... I'm not sure what this topic is because I wrote it and I scratched it out and I wrote another one and I'm like not sure which one to give <laughs> but I'm like I need a second okay I'm gonna go with this one this week our topic is an excellent spirit okay an excellent spirit who wants to try what does an excellent spirit mean Have you ever heard about an excellent spirit? Have you ever prayed for an excellent spirit? Maybe it's your first time hearing about it. What comes to your mind? A submitted spirit, mm. submitted to God. That's good. That's that's really good. That's really good. That's the only way I can be excellent. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really good. Anyone else? <laughs> An excellent spirit. What do you understand by the word excellent? Women. Somebody that is obedient. Somebody that follow the word of God and practice the word of God. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? That's good. Excellent. If I say you're so excellent, what does that mean? I guess for me, it's above normal. Okay. I would say that. That's a good wording too, above normal, right? You usually use that term when you want to super emphasize on something, right? When the word good is just not enough, right? You'll probably use excellent. Wow, that's so excellent. For those of you who have kids, probably if your children do something good and you're like, okay, that's good. You tell them that's excellent, right? Or if they they perform really well ex at school or in school, they're excelling in school, right? Because they it's like outstanding. Does this make sense? So today we're going to look at an excellent spirit, a spirit that's outstanding, a spirit that's extraordinary. Um, Claudia and Lisa said a couple of key things, which is obedience and submissiveness. Because an excellent spirit can only come from the place of obedience and submission to God. Okay. 
So we will look at, starting off, we will look at Daniel chapter, I believe it's chapter 6, verse 3. That's going to be our first verse. Daniel chapter 3, verse 6. And I will read that one. Okay, so we can all open up to Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Okay, and it reads, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Okay, I'll read it again. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So you know how each week we have a new topic, right? But always keep in mind the stuff that we speak about because you'll always find them linking somewhere. Who remembers when we spoke about favor, right? Okay, good, we all remember favor. So we see here what an excellent spirit also carries favor right? The grace of favor. Because remember, we said that favor was being preferred over someone or being chosen over someone. So we see that Daniel was preferred above all the other princes, kings, rulers, everybody else. Not because he had something special about him or he performed in an outstanding or just a weird way. It was just because of that excellent spirit of God that was in him. Okay, and the spirit allowed him to be wise. If you read the book of Daniel, he was a wise and mighty man. Okay, and because of that, he excelled in everything he did because he always used wisdom. If there was something that Daniel was appointed for, he would just perform really good at it, right? If you continue to read verse four, towards the end of verse four, it says, that so people were trying to come up against Daniel and they said that but they could not but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful neither was there any error or fault in him so an excellent spirit allowed him to not have fault or error that even when his enemies wanted to take him down they couldn't find anything in him to take him down because of this excellent spirit that was just so mightily upon him and in him, it actually says it was in him, okay? So the spirit of God, an excellent spirit was in him. People couldn't find fault. They couldn't find error. But my highlight here is that everything he did, it excelled. It prospered so much that he kept getting favor. He kept getting um, promotion upon promotion because the king would probably need a dream interpretation or help with something, and Daniel was the only one in the whole kingdom that could do it, right? And he escaped death. Okay, the second time again, he was there for a dream, right? The third time you would see when he was even thrown in the lion's den, he still excelled in there, <laughs> right? That when he came out of there, again, he was promoted. Okay, so an excellent spirit means that everything I do, everything I touch is blessed, is favored by God, right? So what are the works of our hands? Are the works of our hands need to carry excellency. And that's what we're going to look at today. Okay. Remember, we're talking about a Proverbs. We're looking at Proverbs 31 for the month. So we're looking at a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman carries an excellent spirit. Okay. And with that, the question today or for this week is going to be, what are the works of your hands? So take a moment and just reflect on life, reflect on the things that you do daily, weekly, right? The works of your hands, what are they? And are they excellent? Are they good? Are they fruitful? Are they maybe not fruitful? Sometimes we do things that are just not fruitful or beneficial, but for the sake of feeling good, we do them. 
right? Or for the sake of looking busy. Okay, so everybody can see I'm busy. I'm doing a million things, but none of them are fruitful. None of them are excellent. So what's the point of doing it? Right? So let's look at Proverbs chapter 31, verse 13. And that's where our first, I mean, second scripture is going to come from. So let's look at Proverbs 31. Today we will be looking at 13 to 20, but we will take it verse by verse. So let's start with verse 13. Who wants to read that? What was it? I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 30, 31, verse 13. Thank let's you. Go ahead. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. Okay. Do you want me to read that one more time? She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. What do you understand by that, Cheyenne? She's woman flex. Um, I guess just like she's a working woman, like that that like thinks of things, I guess, like to provide yes. for her and things. Yes. So she's a working woman. Okay. She seeks woo and flex and worketh willingly with her hands. So virtuous woman is not one that's being forced. So today I want us to look at a virtuous woman in two types of ways. Number one, the characters, but secondly, the physical side of it. Because there is the side of it that describes the character. You can literally read the whole verse that I gave today, 13 to 20, and you can look at it just from, um, kind of like a metaphorical side of it, just her characteristics. But you can also look at it from a literal side. Okay. So we're going to look at two sides, physical and character. So verse 13 says, she seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. To seek means what? The search for. Search for. It means that something's hard to find. Okay. Or rare to find. Okay. So it shows that this virtuous woman is determined. That's one of the characters we're looking for. Determined. She, she's determined and she has an endless pursuit. Meaning if she comes across an obstacle, she's not just going to throw in the towel or give up, right? But she seeks that wool knowing that there's something that I need to make with my hands, okay? So she has vision on what it is that she wants to make, what her end result is looking like. The Bible mm -hmm. says that where there is no vision, the people do what? Perish. Perish. Okay, so a virtuous woman is a woman that has vision because it is from that place of knowing what she wants according to the will of God, right? That she's able to exercise and execute and say, okay, this is what I need. I, I need wool or I need what else? Whatever it is, right? to gather that together and make something out of it. So she works willingly without being forced. So no one has to hold a gun to her head and say, hey, work, 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 or do it. She's willingly, meaning she gives, offers herself up. To be willing means that I'm not only going to do it when someone asks, but before someone asks, I'm going to do it. So before mom asks me to help out, I'm going to say, hey, mom, how can I help you? 
right? Before husband asks for help, I'm going to say, hey, how can I help you? Before the boss asks for help, I'm going to say, hey, how can I help you? Willingness. Melissa? Hi, everyone. Um, So um, as I mentioned last week, when we started studying Proverbs 31, um, I uh, personally studied um, every verse of uh, the Proverbs 31 woman. And if I can, I'd like to share some notes that I wrote down. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to read the verse again. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. And I wrote, an excellent woman in God's will is always diligent in seeking her family's well-being, as we said. Before modern times, women spent time spinning and weaving fabrics. Even wealthy women might do this. They also wove items for sale, indicating that they were good craftswomen. So I defined wool as fiber used to make clothing and flax as the most important plant fiber in Bible times because it was used to make linen. Also, flax is an edible seed. Uh, this verse shows that an excellent wife is always seeking to provide food, clothing, and any necessary resources that she can for her household. She willingly puts in the work needed to ensure that these needs are met. That's beautiful. So let me ask each of you this. In today's time, right, for you personally, what would your wool and flax be? Food. <laughs> <laughs> clothing, warm clothing, linen for your bed. Okay, food, warm clothing. Who else? If we say... A virtuous woman seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. So back then, obviously, times have changed. Technology has changed. So not everyone is sitting with that machine, right? Not everyone is even sewing. But does that mean that, that's, that the scripture no longer applies? No, because it's relevant in every point of time. But for you personally today, what would your wool and flax be what would your work be that requires your willingness anyone you can share there's no wrong answer <laughs> remember everyone is different so everyone has a different experience my wool and flax is not going to be the same as lisa it's not going to be the same as claudia it's not going to be the same as cheyenne okay it's not going to be the same as Carisi. It's not going to be the same as anybody. So who wants to give it a try? Clean house and um, making food. Okay. Um, Tell us about clothes, it. Going are, shopping. There some, are there any challenges that you that you face in that? That's what I do. Are there challenges that you face in doing it? Um. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> like not getting help with it. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much the only problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thanks for sharing. Amber? I think you're muted, Amber. Uh, working a full-time job, but also taking care of the house and your husband and taking care of your spiritual life. I mean, there are so many different things that need to be tended to. <laughs> yeah. And what are some of the challenges you face with that? Um, making sure that you have the, like, balance. Balance is big for me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, just taking care of having your priorities, but also having the balance and the love for each one of them and doing it with joy, as you talk about, you know, so that would be my thing. Working and then coming home to try to make dinner or do the laundry or just, you know. Are there days where that kind of just doesn't go in the order you want? <laughs> of course, absolutely. Do you do on those days? Um, well, I forgive myself and move forward and do the best I can that day and move forward for the next day. That's good. I really like something Amber said that there. She said she forgives herself. 
okay? Many times as a woman, we put so much strain on ourselves, right? Yeah. And when we don't are not able to complete a task or perform something, we lash out on ourselves. Mm-hmm. I didn't do it right. Ah, oh, I'm so stupid. How did I forget this? Every time we beat ourselves up and then we start developing resentment and ought towards ourselves. Self-unforgiveness is a real thing. Oh, trust me, it's a real thing. Okay, self-blame, self-hate. And then I start looking at other people. I'm like, oh, why are they able to cook every time at this time? Why do they have their stuff in order? And I don't have my stuff in order. Why am I looking like the person that's going crazy? Okay, because we slip up sometimes. Okay, remember that it's never just perfect and smooth. And even if it is perfect and smooth, you'll always find that there's a hiccup somewhere because life is unpredictable. What if today is a solar eclipse and everyone's just in traffic, <laughs> right? I couldn't control that. Okay, so I'm an hour late. I got home an hour late and now dinner is an hour late or I don't even end up cooking at all. But if I have a feeling of I never get anything right, it's always, why do I suck? I'm a bad, then you start, then the lies start pumping in. I'm a bad mom. I'm a bad wife. I'm a bad sister. I'm a bad child. I'm a bad daughter. I'm just a horrible person. I can never get anything right. Okay, and then that's the attitude we even move into with the next task or the next day. Then performing that verse 13 becomes very difficult because that willingness is no longer there because there's no joy like Amber said okay so I gave someone an example once that if they forget to take out the chicken right to defrost (laughs) I find myself doing that so many times (laughs) so many times I will wake up and I'll go about my day. And when I'm in the car, like somewhere else, I'm like, oh my word, I forgot to take out the meat or the chicken or whatever. It needs to thaw out. What's going to happen now? (laughs) And I gave the person the example of, you know, even in something that's so simple, it's so easy for us to recognize and firstly study. It's important to study your thought pattern and study your emotions. How am I feeling in the moment? Am I feeling like, oh, I always forget to take out this chicken. I'm so stupid. I start beating up. I even start banging my head. It's real, right? Oh, oh just I'm just so stupid saying these words. Remember that the spiritual, wor- the spiritual realm operates out of words. So the words I say matter. The words I speak matter. No matter how small it is or big it is. The demons are just waiting lingering around waiting okay what is what is what is Bridget gonna say today what is Melissa gonna say today okay she thinks she's stupid let's let's show her (laughs) okay right so if I keep forgetting that chicken and I forget it next time I'm how am I gonna look at it am I still gonna say okay you know what Lord thank you it's clearly not meant to be to cook this chicken today I, I just forgive myself I move on Instead of dwelling on that thing for the whole week, you'll be upset at yourself for forgetting the chicken. Or maybe you ask someone else to take the chicken out. (laughs) And now the whole week you're upset at them because they didn't take out the chicken. Right? That's why you rinse the pot. Yes. No, repeat that again. What did you say? I said, that's why you need an Instapot. (laughs) That's why you need an Instapot. (laughs) And there you go. That's why you need an Instapot. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so getting back on track, forgiveness is, is important in a person that carries an excellent spirit. Okay, a virtuous woman. She forgives not only herself, but others. Mm-hmm. All right. Forgiveness is always key in everything. That is such a spiritual principle that's you cannot miss that one Mm -hmm. because it keeps people a hundred steps back something simple Mm -hmm. as forgiveness okay and I love this one especially in ministry when you come across someone you say hey do you have unforgiveness nope I've forgiven every single person oh really yeah okay I just I cannot stand my dad 
Oh, but I thought you forgave him. Right. Ah, oh, he's so horrible. I just, I cannot. Well, I did forgive him. I just, I don't want to be around him because every time I'm around him, he gives me a yuck feeling. That means that you haven't forgiven him. <laughs> right. Because when God forgave us, he never said that. I just cannot stand being around her. She the, gives me a yuck feeling. <laughs> like a Tony B or just right. like CB. So he's able because he's able to forgive us so effortlessly, it's just so easy. We also have to carry that same forgiveness. Okay, so a virtuous woman has an excellent spirit, a spirit that forgives, a spirit that is willing to work. Let's look at our next verse. Who wants to read that one? Proverbs 31, verse 14. I can read it. Okay. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. Okay. She is like a merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. So what made a merchant ship so special? What makes a merchant ship so special? Who can give it a try? Melissa? A merchant ship imports food from afar well not just food <laughs> but <laughs> just goods um goods that are rare and hard to find where you're based at yes it imports let's look at it as your needs your necessities right mm -hmm. food clothes things that are rare in that area i'm not going to import something i have right there but it's something that's special it's coming from a far place so the reference that's being made over here, it says that she brings her food from afar, the same way a merchant ship comes from afar, right? Meaning there's a journey that was tra traveled. There's a story behind it. So a virtuous woman many times, right, has a story behind her, okay? In that place where she is in now, she just didn't come to exist. So many times as women, we want to run away from our stories <laughs> because of shame and guilt. Like I just know, nope. but that journey is what makes it so valuable, right? The further the distance, the more expensive it is. Think about it. have who's ever tried ordering something like an international shipping? No. It's pretty expensive, isn't it? <laughs> I try sending stuff home to Africa. I'm like, no ways. I'll 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 give it to them when I see them. <laughs> There's no way I'm paying this much for shipping. Just nope. <laughs> Something is wrong. <laughs> okay. But there's such a cost which makes the item more valuable. It makes it more precious. So that that you provide as a woman, it becomes so precious and so valuable because of the story behind it. Okay, because of the journey it's gone through. Because of what you've gone through, because of what you carry, it comes from afar off. Okay. Another reason why it's being compared to a merchant ship is because a merchant ship carries valuable stuff, but they're coming from another region. Okay. So when we're looking again at the woman, the work, we said where there's no vision people perish so virtuous woman has vision right so if it's just a vision that can be bought at the corner store it's not valuable okay if i could just go to the local kroger <laughs> and get it there okay but then we see here again the rarity of it and things that are rare they take time so don't rush your process Mm. as a virtuous woman the same way that merchant ship can take six okay. months to arrive or a year to arrive or three months whatever there's time so there's a process that it's going through mm -hmm. so it shows that for this virtuous woman to have brought that food that goods that necessity that vision that assignment that purpose that gift 
that, that she needs to accomplish on this earth. There's a process. So don't run away from your process. Hmm. Amber? Well, I instantly related that to the deliverance process. Would that be part of it too? That will be part of it too. I always yeah. It's like an onion, right? Okay, yeah. I'll say something new. Two things. Never compare your process to someone else's. Mm -hmm. Many times it's like that. In deliverance, people be like, oh, why, why did that so-and-so person get delivered so fast? And why am I still struggling with the same things? Not the same. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Not the same. Processes are Thank not you. the same. Thank you. And I always say it's like an onion. You peel the layer. There's another one. Remember, casting out of demons... That's just a part of deliverance. That's not deliverance in its full entirety. And as long as we're on this earth, we will be going through deliverance. Why do I say this? I always say this one, that God is so sovereign and infinite. And his understanding, none of us can fathom. Meaning each and every day, there's something for me to learn Meaning each and every day of my life, I'm getting delivered from an old thinking pattern. That's why it says renew your mind, right? So as long as I'm existing every single day, I'm being transformed because what is the point of it? He says before the foundations of the earth, right? Says that he predestined us to be conformed. That, that's a process in itself, that word conformed to the image of his only son, Jesus. So if I think that, okay, I'm just delivered and I'm done, or I got all the demons out and I'm done, I'm, I'm wrong, <laughs> right? Because of the rest of my life. So am I renewing my mind? Is my heart changing? Is my life changing? And even if the demons are not even an issue, but am I now being fruitful? Is this making sense to someone? Right? So we're looking at that process. Okay. So if you always think about deliverance, think about it in its entirety. It's not just the one word thing that's just limited to casting out a demon. But if I'm still believing lies, I don't want to stop believing lies. <laughs> Let's say something simple, something else, self-discipline. I can't cast out self-discipline from someone. All right. But maybe today I didn't even know I needed self-discipline until tomorrow that was revealed by me. I mean, by God to me. So now even being delivered from that thing, I'm aware of something. I'm like, oh, wait, hold up. This is an area I need to change. Mm -hmm. I'm being delivered from that old way of life, the old things of life, into a newness of life. Can I, Caroline, can I add a Bible verse? Yeah, go on. <laughs> it just came to mind. I seen it. Uh, so God showed me it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like last, it's um, two Chronicles 15, 7, be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Mm, that's good. That's good. Add that. That's good. That's a good verse. Okay. So there's a process that comes with being a virtuous woman. Don't compare yourself. Again, think about that topic we did the other month. No room for a comparison. Remember that? Now we see it playing in here. Okay. So this merchant ship's not worried about, oh, what time is the other merchant ship getting there? Oh, wait, what type of goods does the other merchant ship have on it? What if people don't want my goods on my merchant ship? No. They're just focused on their journey and their process and where they need to get to. And knowing what they carry, there's, there's also a crowd for that. Meaning there's a people on the receiving end 
waiting for those merchandise. Not everybody is going to want or need the goods from that merchant ship. Okay, because everybody is different. But trust and believe that because of God's breath in you, he also wants to express himself through you in such a way to specific people. So don't 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 be comparing that, oh, person A and B, they're serving God and they have a big stage with 10 million people, right? Or 5 million people. Okay, that's good. That's that's them. Glory to God. Let's celebrate that. Right? And know that where I am also called to, God also has something for me. But don't get caught up in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Get caught up in the transformation of the souls, the building of the souls, and the building of the people. Amen. So let's look at verse... Where did we stop? 15. Who wants to read? Proverbs 31, verse 15. Can I do it? Yeah, go ahead. Me? Yeah, Claudia, go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, Proverbs 15, yeah? Yeah. It rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and portions for her servants. Mm, that's good. This one, again, you can take it in two contexts, literal context or figuratively. Literally, she rises up before it is yet, okay, before the sun is out. She's up early. <laughs> Lisa's like, nope, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Claudia. You wanted to say something. I I want to apply to this. Um, she rises while it is still night. I mm -hmm. used to get up at four o'clock. Mm. Okay. Now I have two weeks that I cannot get up from the bed until nine. I go. What happened? I get up at four. I read the Bible until five, and then from there my day start. Mm -hmm. I have to get up at that time because my husband go to work. So I can I cannot do things if I don't prepare myself first. Yes. Like I, I mean my soul first. Yes. Okay. Then after it's coming, okay, whether I go downstairs and I get into the machine and I start walking in there. And then after I go, after I sweat, I get go and take a shower and take care of myself. Mm -hmm. So I have everything planned before. My daughter get up because she's the last I home school. Mm. So because Aiden now he home school his own self. So he's 17. But Carlos is still need my help. So it, it is impossible for me to go and do stuff when my husband is around. Because mm. I have to prepare his lunch. I he prepared the coffee. I like his coffee, but I like to prepare his lunch. Mm. And then from there, I start my day. Then I have to work promoting my business. Then I have to go outside. Then first, I have to homeschool my daughter. So it's a process. And when I get up that late is make my schedule. Like you said, I don't, I don't call myself any name because I know they're right there waiting for me to say something. Yeah. So it's okay. Today, I'm going to catch up with something. And yes, I forget like uh, last night I forgot to take off the meal for today mm -hmm. and it's still be frozen there in the sink. But I find a way around to make something different. Mm -hmm. So I tell my family, okay, forget about the chicken or forget about this. I changed the menu and I tried to find, like yesterday, the pierogies. Yeah, it was something fast. But like this, I tried to figure out how I can catch up with something that I have to try to fix it up the menu for the family. Yeah. It's not just for them, it's for me too, yeah? Mm -hmm. But it does apply for part of this, for select the good, the goal and the flags. Yes. You know, I try I try to go outside and make money and it's, that's another deal I have to do that I cannot get up at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. I have to do earlier so I can homeschool my daughter so I can go with my business. Mm -hmm. If it's not, 
I can. It's something that I first is my family. Yeah. And then I add another thing, whether it's iron something, whether it's my sheet, the blouse, the pants. So I like to have everything ready before I do all this stuff. So just I want to apply into that. Sometimes is yeah. it look like a, everything is dolled up, but is in, in the back is another scene, you know, like a before the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just I want to apply with that. Yeah, something important that she said that. So especially with the rising up early, right? She said that out of nowhere, like for two weeks, it's like something just changes, okay? So you got to look at a lot of stuff there that go in with rising up early. Firstly, what time did I sleep, right? Remember, excellence doesn't happen the moment you expect it to it's what did I do before to get ready for that excellence? So what did I do the night before to get ready for that excellence? And I'm just going to use a generic one. So it doesn't mean this is what she did, okay, or what she's doing or where it's going wrong or whatever. Okay, so if I am, if I want to get up at four, but I'm sleeping at 10 midnight, 10 p.m. or midnight, it's just impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, because by the time you have to wake up, you'll be so tired and then you'll just hit that snooze. Okay, and it's like, oh my word, nope, not doing it. Okay, another one might just be discipline because if I am sleeping at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. but waking up at one mid midday, that means there's no discipline that's happening there, right? And then it could also be spiritual, 100%, it could also be spiritual right? It could be demonically influenced too. So let's look at this. It says that she rises up while it is yet night. Okay. Like Claudia mentioned, the earlier she wakes up, the more time, it's like, there's just more time to get things done. It's like, everything's just like, there's more time. That's a known fact. Fact. If I wake up earlier, I have more time to do stuff and I have more time to get things done. So I'll look, we'll look at the literal context of that. That a virtuous woman wakes up early to prepare meat for her house, okay? And a portion for her maidens. And if we look at what that could also mean is that the night they can describe a season, a season of darkness. How many people during a season of darkness, they say, it's dark, I'm not gonna work. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna sit and sulk and cry because things are not going my way. But it says a virtuous woman, even in that darkness, while it is yet night, she's not sitting and folding her hands and crying. While it is yet night, knowing that when day comes, that's not the time when she's going to be starting to sow her seeds. That's the time when she's supposed to be reaping harvest. Okay, think about many people in life, how you see all these people. Let's look at successful people, right, according to the world standard of success. Okay, if you look at successful people, we all look at just what they have now and what they've acquired Gave they've acquired it righteously or in the right manner. But we don't look at what they went through. The trials, the failed products that they probably had 3 million failed products, right? Or 10 failed Teslas before the first successful, whatever it is, right? So while it was nighttime, these people are working. So while it is yet night, when no one can see the virtuous woman is working. So when the day comes and people are seeing she's living in an assignment, she's living in a purpose, she's just living, it's just fruit that people are seeing and enjoying. So when it's day, she's not working because that was supposed to be done already. So a virtuous woman is able to properly prepare. Okay, she's not waiting for that time. Okay, when we looked at fruitfulness or being fruitful in 2024, a couple of months ago, we looked at something and this just always struck me or sticks with me. That when 
you are in when God says, for instance, hey, I'm gonna pick on anybody here, for instance. I'm gonna say Rowena, because I know she has a nail business. <laughs> if God says, Rowena, start that business, because that business is gonna help as you're doing people's nails, you're gonna be winning souls or you're gonna be telling them about Jesus. Okay. And if she decided, you know what, God's been telling me to start a nail business, but she just never did it. Okay, that means that she wasn't well prepared, that she's not preparing, that she's folding her hands while it's yet night. So she's just expecting the nail business to fall from the sky, <laughs> right, without a work, without right. a effort, <laughs> <laughs> right? But there's a toil and there's a labor that's coming there that even when God gives us that vision or that idea, it's what am I doing about it now? He said that this is what he wants me to do. This is where he wants to take me to. But am I just sitting like this, expecting it to fall? Right? Because that's what she could have did. Like, I'll just wait here till this nail business falls. But what did she do? She probably went to go to nail school. I don't know, or taught herself how to do nails or studied or took a YouTube course on how to do nails or bought her first pair of equipment. And even the first set was probably horrible. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Right? Very horrible. There we go. There she <laughs> Very horrible. But anyone who meets her now will just look at her nails and be like, trust me, if you guys see her, you'll be like, oh my word, I like your nails. That's what everyone will say. They just seeing the end product. They're not seeing her struggle when mm -hmm. she had failed nail the temps. When she, mm -hmm. couldn't, when she couldn't get the shape and the color right, mm -hmm. right? Nobody is looking at that. Everyone's just looking at the successful story, at the daytime story. No one's looking at her night season. But she knows her night season. And most importantly, God knows her night season because he was there with her. And he was holding her hand through it. So it takes, remember we said an excellent spirit requires obedience. It required her to be obedient. Even if it just seems like, I don't know what's going on right now, Lord, I'm going to be obedient. I am going to be obedient. Okay. God says, hey, start something or hey, do this. You know what, God, I know you want me to do that, but I'll just, I'll just wait. There's an action that's required. And many times this action is in that night while it is yet night, while you still cannot see it. Many times we want to see the end result. That's, that's not how faith is. <laughs> faith is already seeing the promise before you can materially hold. It. Is this making sense to someone? Right? So, Maybe it says to me. Yeah, okay, but if you say it to someone, I'm glad. <laughs> right? So even if we look at God, oh my word, let's look at God in creation. All right? The God who called things as though they were, the things that are not as if they were. Okay. Think about it. If we carry the very nature of God and God himself, when he created stuff, remember it said, he said he spoke the world into existence. So before the world, they'd say this was the world, before the world existed, he said he spoke it into existence. Right? So imagine if God was like, oh, my word, I just, I cannot see the world no. now. It's just, it's not working. Well, I don't see the mountains. Well, he said, uh-uh, light be, trees be, mountain be. He didn't sit there in doubt. Oh, my word. What if I really say mountain or mountain be? <laughs> right? So if we carry the very nature of God, we also have to walk. That's why it says walk in faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because we cannot please God with a doubtful mind with, God, did you really say that that's, that that's going to happen? Oh, Lord, you said you want to heal me. I don't know if, if you, are you really a healer? Is healing for me? It's for everybody else, but it's not for me. 
oh God, did you really say your plans are to do me good and not to harm me? But I don't see that right now. All I see is the storms. All I see is the, the betrayals. All I see is the family talking bad about me. All I see is divorce written all over me. But God, what, what? Because we don't, we don't, we can't even look at the word of God and say, Lord, I see this. When you said something, surely it will not come back to me void. Because if you said it in the beginning of the world, when you said light be, and that word didn't return void, why would it start now? Why? Okay. So while it is yet night, a virtuous woman is able to move and work and do something. While, while it is yet night means also when no one's looking. So don't do stuff to be seen. It doesn't matter what people see. It's fine if they think you're not up to anything. Better that way. I personally don't like people knowing what I'm up to. I've just always been that way. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> Unless I want them to know, but other than that, you will not know. <laughs> okay. It's better that way because God knows, so you don't have to prove it to anybody. Right. So while it is yet night, even if you look at the story of David, he was ordained king. Okay. At the age of 16, I believe. He had a whole anointing ceremony take place. And guess what happens after that? He still had to go back <laughs> to the sheep. He was still in his night season for, for years, actually. Because I think he only became king at probably like 30 years or something. So for a whole 15 years, he was just running from King Saul and fighting giants and doing all these things. It looked completely opposite to the promise. But while it was still night, he was working. He was still being that shepherd, knowing I'm going to deliver a people. I'm going to deliver a nation. While it was still night, he knew what he was created for. He knew why he was there. So while it is still night, while it's still while it's darkness, okay, that's why it says weeping endures a night, but joy comes in the morning. So while that night is there, it can be weeping of tears saying, oh my word, this is the fourth time I'm trying this strategy. Lord, please let it work this time. <laughs> right? Know that when morning comes, joy comes with it too. Okay, let's look at our next verse, 16. Proverbs 31, 16. And for those of us who just joined, we're looking at virtuous women. And our topic tonight is an excellent spirit. What, and the question towards ourselves is, what is the work of our hands? Because our hands are supposed to produce excellent, whether it's excellence as a mom, excellence as a friend, excellence as a daughter, excellence as an employee, excellence as a wife, excellence, whatever it is, wherever I am excellence as a pastor, excellence as a leader. In every area, and don't undermine your area. Okay, who wants to read verse 16? Okay, Amber. Uh, let's see. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. Okay. She evaluates a field and buys it. And she plants a vineyard with her earnings. Okay. She considers a field and buys it. This means this woman is wise. Okay. A virtuous woman is wise. So make irrational decisions. 
Okay. Okay, she doesn't make quick decisions. To consider means I'm looking at my choices. I'm not just going with the first choice. So I'm just not acting out of emotions as a virtuous woman. I'm not just acting out of emotions or feelings, but I'm really using wisdom. Every decision I make, I'm like, God, give me wisdom for this decision. So even if I'm taking a day, if someone comes with the most mind-blowing offer, am I quick to say, okay, yes. Or am I able to just hold it, take it to prayer, consider it? Look at the cost of it. Do I want to do it because of excitement? What are my intentions behind it too? So virtuous woman really moves with wisdom. I consider every opportunity that comes my way. So she considers every opportunity because she doesn't make mistakes. Remember we said that when we read the story of Daniel, it said he had an excellent spirit and there was no fault found within him. But to get to that point, it meant there was wisdom because if this virtuous woman makes an irrational decision or a decision based out of emotions, it's going to cost her. It's going to be faulty. There's going to be error. So it's better to just sit on something and say, let me really make sure this is the wise decision. How many of you have ever noticed that if you think about something for a while, you probably would change your mind about it. <laughs> okay. Compared to your first initial reaction. Okay, if somebody um, invites you somewhere. Let's use that one. It's the simplest. Hey, can you come to this place with me? Oh, yeah, sure, for sure. I'd like to go. And then when you get home, you're like, why did I say yes? I forgot I had to do groceries that day. <laughs> I forgot I had church that day. Oh my word. How do I get myself into this? Right? But instead of first just taking a second and just saying like, you know what? I'll get back to you on that. Let me think about it. It's okay to say that. Let me think. Let me pray about it. Let me consider it. Because I want to make the best decision possible. Remember, as a virtuous woman... Every decision you make affects those around you. It affects your family, your career, your life, the finances, everything. Okay, every decision. I love purses and handbags. Okay, so if I decide to buy a purse when it's not the time to buy a purse, it's gonna it's gonna cost me. <laughs> Like, I about it. like, is this really a wise decision right now? It looks nice, but. <laughs> okay. So you got to think about it. It says that she, we look at this, vir this virtuous woman as an investor now. We see a different side of her. Meaning she's able to invest. Meaning she's able to look at something and see more than meets the eye. She's able to generate ideas. You know that the Bible says that God gives us wisdom for witty inventions, things that we have never been thought of before. Okay, so am I able to look at just something and just see like, mm, okay. But it says that this virtuous woman can look at something and say, okay, wait, this may seem like a good investment opportunity. This may seem like a good business idea. Okay, because such wisdom is upon a virtuous woman. So we see her as an investor. Why is it important? Let me ask this question for anyone. Why is it important for a virtuous woman to have this side of her that's able to look at an idea or able to invest or consider a field and buy it? So it's not that at all she's taking the role of the male. No, not at all. This is not what that's saying at all, but it's shining a different light upon her. Melissa? 
Um, it's important because um, a woman needs to be resourceful. She has mm -hmm. to contribute to the household and to the family in any way that she can. Yes. She's resourceful. Helpful. Okay. Remember that women are, if we even look at Adam and Eve, why was Eve there? A helpmate. Right? So marriage is always about purpose beyond being fruitful and multiplying. Mm -hmm. Marriage is not only about kids or bills. Okay, I'm going to go somewhere now. And I don't care, but I'm going to go there. <laughs> because society has just put us in this mindset that, you know, marriage is just this thing I get to and reach for. And when I'm there, it just becomes a routine of, okay, wake up, nine to five, just routine. Just that's it. And there's no life beyond that. But what was God's intention? Purpose. Right? Because he's even given the man, for instance, probably a vision or an assignment. It's not for the woman to come and bash it down or hate on it, but it's because she's a carrier. You know how a woman can just see something and just, just take it to a whole nother level. <laughs> right? That's what she's there for. Like a man can come and just see blue. And then the woman will say like, wait, hold on. I think we can take it there and there and there and there and there and there. And all over. Because she's able to carry an assignment. Right. But the enemy moves in so swiftly that he even causes a disruption. That he makes life even so materialistic. That everybody's focus is off of purpose, off of eternal purpose. But remember, purpose is not money. No. If you think that, no. Purpose is not money. Money is there. It can assist you in your purpose, but purpose is not money. Okay. Okay. So because women are carriers of assignments, helpmates, they can literally look at something and just take it to a whole nother level. All right, that's what it says, that she considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. We know how big vineyards are and how beautiful and how rich and wealthy and resourceful. So she plants a vineyard. So remember last week we looked at the previous verses from I think it was 11 and 12. Can when a husband safely rests in her, right? Can you be trusted? So can you be trusted with as a helper, as an assignment carrier? as a vineyard planter in the area that you've been called to by God. Knowing that if I do this, I'm going to do it to my fullest potential and fullest capability. And today I was reminded again of something I recently heard that imagine how sad it would be um, to get to heaven and have a playback of all the missed opportunities we've had <laughs> that God needed us to do something in there, in that moment. And we just missed it completely. And we're like, oh my word, wait, that was actually, whoa, hold up. What? Either because I was in my feelings or just ignorant or whatever it was, or concerned with a fight, or concerned with that I didn't take out the chicken this morning, I missed out on opportunities. Because <laughs> that's, that's what the enemy does. Okay. 
So may we, oh Lord, may we just pray that Lord, just give us grace that we will not miss the things that you have for us. That we will really carry out everything that we were created to fulfill on this earth while we are here. Amen. Let's look at verse 17. Who wants to read that one? Proverbs 31, verse 17. Yes. Carisi, go ahead. I think you're muted. We can't hear you. Can we hear her? Try saying something. Hey, okay. Hello? Yeah, there okay. you go. Sorry, verse uh, 31, verse 17. Yeah. <clears throat> She does her work with energy. Her arms are strong. She makes sure that what she makes is good. She works by her lamp into late into the night. She okay. makes up right there. The 17. That's perfect. Okay. So a virtuous woman we see here moves with strength. Right, strength. Let's see who can read the King James version of verse seventeen. I'll ask Melissa. Uh, okay, just a moment. okay almost there okay okay she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms okay who can take a guess what does that mean she girdeth her loins with strength and strengthened her arms works out <laughs> <laughs> it could be that too she works out let's not throw that out <laughs> she works out that's true so she also looked considers her health because if she's not healthy she cannot complete it's true ladies let's not forget even though it says physical exercise profits little it still profits something right because if you've ever engaged in spiritual warfare, you'll realize that your physical body, it's like, it just goes through. You don't know what it's like, whew, what just happened? So if I'm weak physically like this body, it's going to be a bigger struggle. Okay. But let's look at something else. Melissa. Um, I'm not sure um, what version uh, Carissa just mm -hmm. said. Um, mm -hmm. I have the... English standard version here and it says she dresses herself with strength yes I think that's and makes, right. yeah and makes her arm strong um I wrote down that um an excellent wife in God's will asks her father God for strength to take care of her duties every single day also, she knows that she is strong and wears her strength with a quiet confidence. The yeah. proper 31 woman is also strong physically and mentally as she is resilient. She knows that any challenges to come will only serve to make her stronger. Mm. Amen. So remember when we said that a, ex a virtuous woman has an excellent spirit, but an excellent spirit is a spirit that's submitted to God meaning I'm not relying on my own strength 
even as I go, you know, it's so easy many times to rely on our own strength, even in the smallest task. I want to task you all with something. In the smallest task that you have to do, ask God for strength and see how it, it's a game changer, no matter how small it is. Okay. Before I do my task list for the month or for the day or whatever it is, before I plan anything, I just used to go ahead and just start planning and writing stuff down that I <laughs> wanted to do or thought I had to do. And then it changed. And I'm like, you know, Lord, I'm asking you for strength as I write down this task I have to do. Lead me and help me to write down things that are relevant. But most importantly, give me strength to perform each task. And it changed everything because even in moments where I felt completely weak or unable or just like, I really cannot do this thing today. At the end of me doing it, I'm like, where did I even get strength to do that? And then I remember, well, it's strength from God. So even in the smallest thing that you are completely reliant on yourself, I want to test you to start putting your trust in that, in God concerning that thing, no matter how small it is. No matter how small it is, if we can get to that point of fully depending and relying on God and his strength. Remember, our human strength will always fail us, even though it, we think that it's helping us in one way or two, it will fail us. OK, so I'm coming back to this verse again, where it said she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. Why did the old like in the olden days? Do we know what it meant to gird your loins? What would it look like? Okay. Wear a shield, maybe? Wear a shield? No. Or, no. Anyone else? A girdle. What's a girdle? Around your waist? Uh, well, like around your whole, like your waist. Okay. Uh, Yes. Who else wants to give it a shot? Like, I guess, like to stand strong. Okay, kind of. Okay, so in the olden days, before people went to war, they would gird their loins. You know what this process looked like? It looked like, you know, people, they used to wear robes, the men too, like a long robe. So, in the battle, if we're all wearing a long robe, think about it like a long dress, and we're trying to fight, I'm going to be stumbling over this robe and falling down, right? Because I'll be tripping over this robe. So the process of girding their loins meant that they would take this robe and fold it up like a diaper around them, right? And then they would tuck it in like right here, they would have like a belt-like thing. So it would like strengthen them to give them stability. And then they would tuck it in so that they could adequate, not adequately, but effectively stand and fight during battle without falling down, without tripping over, but they are able to take the right battle posture because their loins have been girded. Okay. So if we look at that same imagery, when it says that the woman girds her loins with strength, right? It means that everything that can cause her to possibly stumble and fall in her work, assignment, purpose, whatever it is, marriage, whatever it is, it said that anything that can possibly cause her to fall She's not letting it. Any distraction, no. Nope. She's rather leaning on strength instead of those distractions. What could these distractions look like that could cause her to, to fall? Emotions. <laughs> okay. Emotions. Because if we're emotional, that means there's an area of her life that we're not strong in. So she's girding her loins with strength, meaning no room for emotions. Think about it in a battlefield. Do you think that they had time to be emotional with one another? Mm -mm. They were just going and going straight for, for it. 
So there's no room for emotions, no room for, oh my word, I just don't like the way she looked at me. I just don't like what she said about me. I just don't like the way she treated me. Those are all distractions that are meant to cause her to fall. But if she has her loins girded with strength, she's not engaging with these distractions of the enemy. Who can give me another distraction? Wait, can, I have a, can I ask a question, please? Yeah, go ahead. So that even goes for like happiness too. We explain that. What do you say? You said that there's no room for emotions. So does that go for like happiness also? That means there's no room to be ruled by your emotions, to make emotional decisions. But yes, I would also go for happiness. Remember, we're not leaning on happiness. We're leaning on joy. Many joy. times yeah, people okay. lean on happiness. It's a temporary feeling. And even in the sense of, I'm not going to do things if I don't feel happy. Right? Mm. Remember, happiness is like an emotional thing. If I have... 10,000 in my bank account right now. I'm happy, right? <laughs> and if that 10,000 is gone, I'm not really happy. So does that is that going to determine my actions? Is that going to determine how I serve? Is that going to determine my posture towards God too? No. Okay. If it says the joy of the Lord is my strength, I'm leaning on his joy. Remember, joy is through every season, whether it's a season of happiness or sadness or whatever it is. My posture is the same. Let us make sense. So even someone yes. who's being ruled off of happiness, that if I'm not happy today, I'm not going to be nice to people. You get what I mean? If things didn't go my way. That's why happiness, I would look at happiness like a shadow. Right? It's like you, it's chasing a shadow. You will never catch it. Because the moment you think you're happy, anything can come and take that happiness away. Anymore, think about it. Have you ever just been so happy today? It's like, it's such a good day. And someone can just come with the silliest comment and just throws you off like this. So when that person comes with the silliest comment, am I still able to stand in a place of joy? Can my worship still be the same? Can my fight still be the same? Remember this woman who is planting her vineyard right? It means that there's trial and error. I'll make an example again of Rowena, <laughs> right? When she started her business doing nails, it didn't always look happy, but that didn't stop her drive. That Okay, she's seen today, she saw five clients, but then tomorrow it's only one client and I have bills due and that caused her to throw in the towel. Like I'm not doing nails no more because I'm not happy, Right? So there's a complete difference with happiness and joy, right? So it doesn't mean, remember we have, we were given emotions, but the reason we have emotions is not to be governed by the emotions. It means that the emotions are not leading us. Remember, we ought to be spirit-led people, only led by the spirit of God. Because I bring my emotions under subjection and under submission to the spirit of God. Is this making sense? So someone who has their loins girded means that they're spirit-led. They're not led by emotions. What does emotions look like? Offense. <laughs> right? Let's even look at good emotions. For a second, hold up. Let's look at good emotions. Because some, sometimes you, it's easy to also get distracted by a good emotion. Who has ever had exciting news happen to them and you just shared it with like people immediately? And, or have you ever heard of someone, let's say you got a new job, right? They just offered you a job. It's not even, you haven't even signed a contract yet, but you're like, go tell all the people posted on social media. I've been looking for a job for a year. I just got a job. Facebook, look at me, I got a job. All my friends and family, I got a job. People that don't like me, I got a job. And then next thing, like the job doesn't even fall through. It's like, it just, right? And you're like, wait, hold up. What happened? Emotions can cause us to announce things prematurely. 
right? Emotions can cause us because it was a good emotion. I was excited. But I didn't even take it to God in prayer. <laughs> I didn't even ask him, Lord, is this the right time to announce something? Remember, something is always the most fragile when it's in seed form. Because the enemy can easily destroy it. But overexcitement can allow me to tell the enemy, hey, look where my seed is planted. Come for it and take it. Okay, so let us be people who are led by the spirit of God and not emotions. Because emotions will always trick you. <laughs> this doesn't mean that emotions are bad. They're just meant to be submitted. <laughs> okay. What else is another distraction? Think about it. Gird your loins up. She girds her loins with strength. And she's not distracted. She's not falling in her battle because of her robe being untied. So what do you think? What could be another cause? An argument. An argument. Yep. That's a distraction too. Disappointment. Disappointment. A sadness. Yes. Melissa? Comfort. Comfort. Mm, say that one again. Comfort. Comfort. Guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> right? Comfortability is such a distraction. Ladies, one thing I learned that I'm just like, oh my word. When God has something for us to do, let us be so eager to do it. Because if we refuse to do it, don't think for a second that he will not use someone else to do that thing. Don't think that for a second <laughs> that he will not use someone else to do that thing. Catherine Coleman, right, says that, or said that, because she's not alive anymore, said that, Someone asked her, like, why did you, why did, I guess, why did God choose you, like a woman, to, you know, preach and do this mighty miracles and stuff? And then she says, I don't know, I guess, because he sent a man and a man didn't want to go. So I went. <laughs> That's, <funny. laughs> That's literally what she said. I guess the man didn't want to do it. So I said, yes. Okay. Comfort. Okay, look at King Saul. He got comfortable as king, thinking that God's not going to replace me. I'm going to be king forever. And he started getting out of assignment, started disobeying God because he was comfortable. And then God said, okay, I see David, a man after my own heart. So comfortability will cause us to be distracted and not to be strong. And to fall, and to be prey to the enemy, and to be weak. What's another one? Temptation. Temptation. That's good. Temptation. All sorts of temptations. Everything. It can be anything and everything. Temptation. It's so funny how the enemy works. That in the moment when someone is right about to take off, that's when temptation comes. And many times because of lack of knowing where God is about to take me, we fall to that temptation because we think that either God's not going to do what he said or we think that that temptation is the promise. Jesus in the wilderness. What happened after Jesus was tempted? After angels came and ministered to him, what, what happened after that wilderness? He was strengthened, right? He was strengthened. His ministry. His ministry. It said from that moment forward, word went about him throughout all, all the places. Okay. If someone can find that verse for me, it will be amazing. 
right? It said from that moment, word went about him. So in that moment of temptation, the enemy was just tempting him saying, I'll give you this whole world, the kingdoms, na na na, all these good stuff. I'll give it to you. But Jesus said, nah, because this is, this is not what my daddy promised me. I'm not doing this. But after resisting that temptation, he was able to taste the real promise. After he was tempted and he overcame. So many people get tempted, but they, they don't overcome it. And temptation comes right when someone's about to be promoted or have this big breakthrough. Okay. Did anyone find that verse? Yeah, it's Matthew, Matthew 4, I think, 7 through 11. What does it say? Um, Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Okay. I think for the one that says then word went about him. Then word went round, round about him or something. So it might be in John. Oh, let's see. Let me try to find it. Mm. Or then fame. It's either fame or something. Then fame went. Okay, it's fine. Anyway, let's look at Mark chapter one, verse 28. It might be that one. Mark chapter 1, verse 28. Yeah, I think that's one. Mm. No, this is not the one I'm looking for. Okay, it's okay, because I'll stick to this looking for it now. <laughs> That's fine, right? So temptation is another distraction. Who can give me one more distraction before we move on? So we wrap up here. I would say like the trials and the storms of life. The trials and the storms of life. Let me give us one. It's in Proverbs chapter six, verse six. Proverbs chapter six, verse six. Anyone who's there can read it. Go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Mm, so this is another one, laziness, right? So no room for laziness as a virtuous woman, because the Bible says, go to the ants, oh sluggard, sluggard is a lazy person. Have you, who has ever seen like ants working and building their home and getting food and stuff? Who's ever seen it physically with your eyes? It's wild, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. like, are these ants high or what? <laughs> yeah. I see like 20 ants carrying oh like a piece of bread and I'm like, wow. They are determined. They are in sync. They are just flowing. They're so militant. My goodness, they are so diligent and determined, right? So Bible says, go, anybody who's saying, you know, I just cannot do it, I'm not able to, there's a verse in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5, 
Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5, and I'll read it. It says, he that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Right? And then there's one in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. Who wants to read that? I can. Okay. A lazy farmer doesn't does not plow when he should. So at harvest time, he has no crop. Amen. A lazy person doesn't plow when he should. Right? So when it's harvest time, he doesn't have anything. He doesn't have food because he didn't work. Right? Some, some, uh, there's other versions that says he doesn't plow because it's cold. He says, oh, it's too cold. I, I just, I cannot work. It's just too much for me. I just, I cannot work. I'm going to break a nail. <laughs> right? That's his reason. Always, a lazy person always has an excuse. But when the harvest comes, they will look at other people's harvest and be like, wait, but I'm hungry. But they didn't work. Okay, so there's people, a virtuous woman just has this character and nature of diligently working. No room for embarrassment. She doesn't care what type of job she's working. Right? She doesn't care what people have to say. People say, oh, why are you working there? <clears throat> when I was growing up, my mom, okay, and I share this story sometimes with some of you. We were five people and we would have a loaf, a half a loaf of bread to survive on for a couple of days. Right. And my mom would walk miles with this big loads of bags on her head, like with clothes. And she would just go to every person's door knocking. Hi, can you buy some clothes? <laughs> can you buy some clothes? Can you buy some curtains? Right. And I would look at it and, you know, you would see family members who were so wealthy who would like mock her and laugh. And do you get what I mean? Laugh at her. Like, what is she doing? But she didn't care. Because she's like, my family, my kids, <laughs> I'm going to bring that, that food for, um, for them. Right? So she didn't care about a status or her reputation or how she looks like or what people would say. And I'm sure many of you can relate to this too. All right, that she just went and just grinded and I guess hustled. <laughs> right, she would knock and whether it was rain or cold winter time or long places. And I would always see her like just having all these different jobs or different things that she would work. And it's just so amazing how she just did it so diligently and just always, she never complained once, never said, oh my goodness, why am I doing this again? Even if we were being disobedient kids, she never said, why am I doing this for these kids that don't listen? <laughs> She would still do it. And you know what? She would even, I just, that's, I think that's my first example of selflessness, where she would stand 10 hours in the sun selling clothes or selling stuff to buy bread. And she wouldn't even eat it. She would first let her family eat. Imagine how many of us can do that, right? Where you would see your neighbor and be like, you know what? Here you go. That leads us into our next point, which is verse 18, Proverbs 31, 18. Who wants to read that? Yes. Melissa. Okay, let's go for Melissa. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Did someone raise their hand first? I, I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Okay. It's fine. You can read Melissa and then Carissa will read the other verse i'll give her next um okay sure okay so verse 18 she perceives that her merchandise is profitable her lamp does not go out at night 
actually retail 20. Okay. She puts her hands to the staff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Okay. So her candle doesn't go out by night. Right? Her light is always ever shining. Even after a full day of hard work, a virtuous woman is still full of grace and love and compassion and the characteristics of God. Right? Her light doesn't go out. She's still the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But I want to look at verse 20, which said, she stretched out her hand to the poor and she reaches forth her hand to the needy. So this woman is a virtuous woman because she's able to help the needy. So you're a virtuous woman because you're able to help the needy, those who are in need especially in such a society where there's just a culture of everybody's fending for themselves. It's first me and my household. I first got to be good in my household. <laughs> and that's good. And then everybody else can be in the street and die, be in the cold and die. I just, I don't care because I'm good. That's the type of society we live in, Right. But here we see that we are encouraged as people of God, as women of God, as virtuous women, that we have to push forward and be a helping hand to the needy. Cheyenne? Yeah, I think just like, you know, as a woman of God, that's mm -hmm. like main qualities is just being selfless. It's yeah. like yourself, like, <clears throat> like with your family. And just like other people is like, it really comes down to like, just putting like people above yourself yeah. and just bliss. Yeah. When Jesus says, lay your life down for your friends, right? Your neighbors, your brother, your sister. Remember that your friends are not just the people you talk to and do you good. right that doesn't mean being a doormat amber said but we do that with healthy but do we do th is that a question okay but do we do that with healthy boundary there's a difference between being used and being abused that's why number one without wisdom we cannot do anything so wisdom will always lead us in the paths of life. Wisdom will always lead us even in serving and being a helping hand to people. To Wisdom will always lead us into life and not death. So wisdom will always lead us even to not being abused. Is this making sense? Or being taken advantage of because I have wisdom. Right, But if I lack wisdom, then it's easy to fall into situations where I think I'm doing good, but I'm being taken advantage of. That's why it says we should ask for wisdom. We should never do something out of the wisdom and understanding of God. Because I can think I'm doing good and the right thing, but not. Right? The entire, if you read just Jesus's instruction, and he talks about love. He says, and, and then Paul says, love is the fulfillment of the law. Because in loving, as Christ love, all the other things are taken care of. Let me give you an example. Some people, okay, what does that verse mean? Love is the fulfillment of the law. Many times people struggle so to fulfill the law, Right? And then Paul says, just love and you'll fulfill it. What does he mean by that? Who can tell me? I mean, it says love is the fulfillment of the law. Melissa? Well, 
Okay, so love is the fulfillment of the law basically makes reference to um, people in the Old Testament living by the law, by the commandments, uh, getting taxed. This is BC, before Christ. So once Christ came to the scene, let's say, once he came into the world and he started his ministry um, and he taught people the new commandment, which is love. Um, love pretty much covered um, what it, it, it pretty much paid the price for all these sets of rules that people had to follow. And then it introduces this new standard that God brings to us through Christ, which is to love one another. Amen. So if we look at Romans chapter 13, verse 10, we don't have to go there. You can go there in your own time if you want. It says, love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Somebody can strive every day like, oh my word, I just need to stop stealing. I need to stop stealing. I need to stop stealing. They know stealing is wrong. Okay. And then they come to Christ, right? They accept Jesus. They follow Jesus. And they follow this mere principle that says, love your neighbors as yourself. If I love my neighbor, I will not want to steal from them. Who will I? So love has fulfilled the law. Are we understanding? If I love, I will not want to harm that person. So in loving them, in loving them, we've accomplished so much that out of love we could not do, out of Jesus we could not do. Okay, and then I want Ms. Carissi still on here for her to read Acts chapter 9, verse 36. And we will be wrapping up now. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Excuse me, which verse? Acts chapter 9, verse 36. I can read it. I think I have it. Okay, go ahead. Um, in Joppa, is that right? Yes. Okay. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Okay, just read Lock the first verse. Just verse... 36. Oh, in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. She was always doing good and helping the poor. Okay. There was this woman, this disciple who was always doing good, right? And helping the poor. Right? Her name was Tabitha. So similar to that virtuous woman who was always doing good <laughs> and helping the poor, the needy, we see another example right? To be that helping hand. Remember, doing a good deed doesn't make you righteous. We're only righteous because of Jesus. Let's establish that, okay? If I feed five million hungry people, but I'm not saved and I die, I'm not going to heaven, no matter how much good I did. If I don't have Jesus, I'm not going to heaven, okay? When we become born again, we become righteous. So we're only righteous because of Christ, right? That doesn't mean we are horrible people and we're not going to help people. Because once we become righteous in Christ, because of him that now dwells in us, we now carry his nature. Where he went, he always helped people, 
right? He was that light that shined. That when we're amongst people, we're not going to look at people and say, I'm, I'm good because I'm Christian and they're not Christian. And that makes, do you get what I mean? We don't look down on other people. Okay. We don't even think we're better. This was a lesson I even learned a while ago where God just told me, hey, don't for a second think you're better than nobody. <laughs> right? Don't even think you're better than another Christian because you know about deliverance. Yes, spiritually, you'll reap benefits of it. Right? But don't think that I'm more righteous because of them. Because I know how to cast out a demon or because I know how to do this. Right? Daniel, if you continue reading that book, said he carried an excellent spirit because in everything he always gave credit to God. He said, it's not me. I really cannot do anything. I cannot. I'm, I'm just nothing without him. It's only because of him. So that's that same attitude we carry. It's not because of we do this or we pray for this long or we cast out demons or we do this or we do this. No, it's simply because of God's grace. So just always carry that as a reminder. It's simply because of his grace and mercy. We didn't do anything to deserve it. Because of his grace, his mercy, and his love. So nobody has to do something to get you to do good towards them. Simply because of love, you're going to do it. Okay. Okay. There's a verse in Luke that says, he that is faithful with a little will be faithful with much. So a virtuous woman is a woman of faithfulness. Excellent spirit means you're faithful with what God has given you to do in your family, in your career, in your home, wherever it is. Do it with so much might. Be so faithful with it. Because only from a place of faithfulness can increase come. Okay? Increase can only come from a place of faithfulness. Because if I'm misusing something right now or reckless with it, why would I get more? Because if I get more, I'm just going to do the same. But they that are faithful with the little are faithful with the much. That's in look. And our last verse for today. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Who wants to read that? What book is it in? The book of Colossians. Yes, uh, like in Genesis, New Testament, or oh, um, New Testament. Okay. Colossians chapter three, verse seventeen. I can do it. Okay, go on. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks in God, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. Amen. Amen. So whatever we do in word or in deed, as we are virtuous women, in everything we do, in every area of our life, in the work of our hands, may everything that we do be on to the glory of God. So always examine and evaluate the things I'm doing. Is it towards the glory of God? Is God getting the glory? Some stuff, honestly, they seem really good and nice to do. But is it beneficial? Do I even have to sometimes... Is it a choice where I have to compromise? Never compromise your faith. Never compromise your walk with God. 
Never, ever. Not for anybody. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. It's, it's, it's not worth it. Okay. But there's such a reward for you just sticking through and running the race. It's a hard race. As a woman, as a virtuous woman, it's a, it's a hard race. Okay. But a virtuous woman is strong. What we've learned today is both in her character, physically, right? She labors. She's not lazy. She's not distract, distracted by stuff. She has vision. She's not irresponsible. But spiritually, we've also seen that spiritually, she's strong. Mentally, she's strong. Emotionally, she's strong. Okay. And her strength becomes a benefit to those around her as well. That's what everything will always point back to as people. God works in us and through us and even the testimonies you each have. Everything that God's done for you. You may think that it just ended for you. <laughs> That's how God always surprises us. It doesn't. <laughs> it's not just for you. It's, it's not. It's really not. Because you in your life gets used to somebody else gets affected by him, impacted by him. Another soul. Okay. So that's what we looked at today, and we're going to pray. Before we pray tonight, do we have any questions or contributions? Melissa? Um, as always, um, I'm just so amazed by, by everything that God teaches me uh, daily, weekly. Um, these... Um, these group meetings have really helped me a lot in just learning more about what God wants from me um, and how, as women, we can come together and glorify God, especially in a world where woman empowerment isn't isn't really common. I just give glory to God for that. Um Amen. And with that being said, um, I want to introduce Shakita. Um, I invited I her to the women's uh, group study tonight, and here she is. And I also want to shout out Francis for coming Amen. back. Amen. Hi, Shakita, <laughs> and hi, Francie. We're so happy to see you again. Thanks, Melissa. Oh, my word. Melissa's on a roll here. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Putting the pressure on us to share that link. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm very. He's amazing. Continue the good work. God is totally, holy, glor being glorified here right now. I'm listening and I am so inspired. Ladies is amazing. Continue the good work. And I, I, I just can tell you that this to me is like going back. Because I, I have been in the ministry like way back, like by like 1993, I started studying the Bible. And sometimes, you know, God says, you forget. Not that you, not that God is saying it's sometimes we, we get so caught up in the world, so caught up in our troubles that we, for some reason, we forget how amazing God is. God mm -hmm. never leaves us. He never leaves us, ladies. We tend to kind of slide away. So we got to get back. And make sure we stay fired up for the Lord every day. Amen. You know, we're going to have good days. But then we're going to have days that are going to be challenging. And this right here is amazing. And I want to tell you, ladies, and Melissa, I'm very proud of you, by the way. And um, and the one that's leading it is doing a great job. I just want to tell you, thank you so much for bringing me back to my first love. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate this. Amen. Thank you for joining. Thank you. And praise the Lord. Um, it's all here. Once again. Amen. But just want to shout out Shakita since it's her first time. Um, introduce yourself, girl. 
Skype. Kina, <laughs> talk to us. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Melissa, again for inviting me. This is the second time um, she's invited me. Actually, the first time I was unable to make it. So she is standing firm and inviting other women to Amen. join this women's group. So shout out to Melissa. I really enjoyed myself tonight. It's such a pleasure to be here fellowshipping with other women of God. Um, it's so hard in this world to find that where we can all come together to glorify God and to learn and to strengthen ourselves. So I'm just really grateful to be here to learn more. And I will continue to attend. And mm -hmm. to the teacher, you're amazing. You have such a grace in the way that you speak. Mm -hmm. And you break things down very, very well, where you don't leave any questions to be left. So I just wanted to shout you out as well. Amen. Thank you so much. Glory to God. Glory it's, to God. It's him. He's so amazing. He really is. So Amen. thank you, Jesus, for every single wonderful lady over here. And you know what's so interesting is that a couple of the ladies who actually like, you know, come like when we have like events or whatever at church or seminars or whatever, it's so interesting to see like one of the ladies be like, oh my you're this person from the zoom and the other one's like oh my word you're this person so it's really a sisterhood and it's really I agree with you in this world it's so hard to just find fellowship with sisters with other women yeah it's just it's so hard so praise God for zoom and the internet <laughs> amen amen to that okay ladies anybody else have a question or anything for the night before we pray, going once, twice, three times. Okay, let's pray, ladies. So tonight we're going to pray and we're going to ask the Lord. You're just going to lift your hands to him tonight, right? And you're going to say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. Lord, truly without you, I am nothing. I have nothing. But in you, Lord, I have everything because you are my everything, Jesus. So today, Lord, I'm just asking you for strength in every area of my life. In my physical capacity, my spiritual capacity, my mental capacity, in my emotions, in everything, Lord, I'm just asking for your strength because it's only your strength that I can count on. It's only your strength that I can rely on. Just take a moment and in your own words, just pray to him and just ask him for strength. Just pray in the spirit, just pray and ask him, Lord, we just ask for strength today, Lord. Strength to be virtuous women according to your word, Lord. Women that walk in diligence and wisdom and confidence and women that are not lazy, that are not fearing, but that are determined. Father, women that are able to be caring and loving, oh Lord. Women that are able to start businesses and, and leave behind something, oh Lord that will continue to impact souls, that can continue to win souls. Lord Jesus, in all our works, in everything we do, may you be glorified. So we just ask tonight, Lord, that you will just pour out such a blessing, O oh Lord, upon us, upon our hands, Lord, that everything that our hands touch will be excellent. Lord, give us your spirit of excellence to excel in all the things that we do. Excel as women, as leaders, as mentors, as mothers, as wives, as daughters, as stewards, servants of the kingdom of God. Give us a spirit of excellence, Lord. That everywhere we go, Lord, excellence will be our portion. And everything we touch, Lord, excellence will be our portion. 
that everything we lay our hands on excellence will be our portion, not because of anything we do, Lord, but simply because of who you are, simply because it's your spirit that dwells in us, simply because we are heirs of the kingdom of God. And this is our inheritance. So we just rejoice in this, Lord. We rejoice in this grace Father, that you are releasing upon us, Lord, we just ask for a new measure of grace, Lord. Father, that the areas that need to be addressed in our life that we've been putting off, Lord, that they will be addressed. Lord Jesus, we just need your help, Lord. Every day, we need your help. There's a reason you say, Lord Jesus, to come to you those who are burdened and heavy laden, and you will give us rest. So again, we pray tonight, Lord, teach us what rest looks like in you. Rest as a virtuous woman. When a world like this is so noisy, Lord, we want to know what rest looks like, what peace looks like. Even in homes that are not peaceful, Lord, we know that we are in you so we can have peace in situations that just seem like there is no peace, Lord that we can have rest in the midst of chaos, in the midst of storms. Father, but may we also have such a grace, Lord, that when we enter a room, enter a situation, encounter people, that we will be the solution, that we will be an answer to someone's prayer, Lord, that we will be the vessel that you will send out to do your work. Just take a moment and just pray, continue praying and just lift your voice to him. Just take the next 30 seconds and just pray and just ask him. That we will be women of fire, Lord women who are not ashamed of you, Lord, women who can boldly stand and decree and declare that you are Lord over our families, Lord over our situation, Lord over our circumstance, Lord over every sickness, over every disease, over every affliction, you are Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise, Lord. We thank you for an outpour of your strength, for an outpour of fuel, Lord, to keep moving. Just fuel us up, Lord, and fill us up to keep moving, to keep going forward in you, in your paths of righteousness, Lord. We bless your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just take a moment and just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. It belongs to you, Lord. May we always remember that you are God all by yourself, that you are the self-existing, all-sufficient God, that you are Yahweh. May we remember that as we sleep tonight, as we wake up tomorrow, as we go about our day, may we always remember that you are God over our situation in our life, that you are God over our minds, that you are God over our thoughts. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Lord, I pray that you bless each and every lady here, each and every person that's tuned in, whether they're listening right now or whether they will watch this video afterwards, wherever they are, Lord, just meet them at that point of need that they've been crying out for because you are faithful. Your word is faithful, Lord. Your counsel is faithfulness and truth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.
Thank you, ladies, for joining. Love you, beautiful ladies. And good night, you. everybody. Awesome. Good night. Good night. Good night, ladies. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.